Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're here for Research in Manoa with Andrea Gabrielli of the School of uh, Social and Earth Science, Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology. He's a scientist, PhD scientist. Okay, and we study the volcano. We study Kilauea. We learn things about the eruption that nobody outside of HIGP and SOWEST, nobody knows. Welcome back to the show about the eruption, Andrea. Thank you very much, Jay. Thank you for, for having me here. It's an ongoing issue, isn't it? Still happening? Still and happening, and we see the still ongoing subsidence at the summit. More volume is being lost at the summit, and this magma, this volume goes and feed the very lively Fisher 8 on the East Rift Zone and, and feed this well-established channel, which hasn't changed much since we talked about last time. What does that mean when you, you say well-established channel? That's a new thought for me. So, okay, the channel's changed in the past few weeks. And the, and the, uh, the, main, mm, the main depression depressed further. Okay, and now the lava is, is, is exiting through this channel, uh, which is going downhill to the ocean. So what does that channel mean going forward? Is that a permanent channel now? Well, it seems that uh, it's pretty well established, it's pretty permanent, uh, because right now the, mag the lava that is uh, being poured out, Fissure 8, uh, has this very well established path that brings the lava from the fissure, from this vent, uh, all the way down to the ocean entry. And this is because of very high... Uh, discharge rate of this lava, because usually we're used to this um, molten material pouring out and flowing slowly and eventually forming lava tube. But this, uh, um, it's really like a river, a river of molten lava, and uh, we saw pictures, uh, thanks to the USGS, uh, of uh, sort of islands in the, in the channel, in this river of molten lava that don't move. But also we saw boats, and this was very interesting because these are pieces of solidified rocks which are being, which roll down into the channel and are transported down, down, down slope, basically. So we had this sort of boats, you know, flowing down, and it's very interesting. Uh, but as I said, uh, the um, path itself is not changing much. This is a well-established river, a well-established or channel, as they would call it, uh, the volcanologists would call it, uh, that brings the lava down to the ocean entry. And so um, lava is still entering the ocean, it's creating new land, uh, and the fissure, the height of this lava being discharged at the fissure is pretty much stable as well. We're talking about 80 to occasionally uh, 150, 200 feet height uh, mm. burst. Really, right now? Uh, yeah, but um, and again, we, we, we see this subsiding at the summit. Yeah, the Hale Ma'o Ma'o crater, which doubled, <coughs> which doubled in size. So we're looking at these phenomena right now. So when you see this channel, this well-established channel, this tells you some stuff. This tells you that the likelihood is that, is that new lava is going to go right down the same. Path. If uh, <coughs> if nothing uh, uh, obstructs it, yeah, because the effusion rate, for example, could change, and so in that case, more lava could enter the channel, and then it it, it, it might eventually break on the sides, yeah, create new breakouts, or it could uh, uh, be obstructed by some solidified lava and change path, or it could decrease. Nobody knows what's happening, but uh, what's going to happen, but. Uh, uh, right now, it's uh, pretty much well established, yeah. And, uh, but um, today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about uh, different styles of volcanic eruptions. We, everybody witnessed the, this ongoing episode at Kilauea Volcano, <coughs> uh, but also the uh, tragedies that unfolded when more uh, viscous lava erupted, for example, in Guatemala. And now we have another volcano which is erupting in the Galapagos Islands. Oh, no kidding. So we have all these activities. And so, so here... Let me, let me ask you, though, is are we in a certain special time now? Is there something troubled in the mantle? No, no, that, no, that, no don't that worry. It has all no. these volcanoes going off. It's like a fire. July 4th. 
That's what it is. <laughs> we have fireworks and activity. No, but it, it's nothing particular related with the mantle, or so we can we can stress this. But uh, it's really uh, different volcanoes that might you know come up come active and it become yeah. yeah. And um, and there is also another one in Indonesia which is currently active, but. People don't talk about these things in the news, so you don't hear it, and then you hear it all the time happening all at once, and it seems they're happening all at once, but uh, it's just really, you know, how the Earth uh, really works. The, yeah. the natural process. The natural yeah. processes. Yeah. But, um, uh, so here, for example, I brought to you today two uh, tiny models of volcanoes, and you can see the shape is very different of these two. This one is very flat, and you can see it, it looks sort of like a shield. There is a crater on top. This is, a, and this is what, for example, volcanoes like Mauna Loa or Kilauea uh, really look like. These are called shield volcanoes, and you can see because of the warriors kind looks of like a shield, shape. Yeah. That's right. And um, you can see th um, uh, these volcanoes are created by very. Um, uh, lavas that have a very low content in, in silica, so very low silica content, and they are called mafic lavas. So here we're talking. Can you spell that? Uh, M A F I C, mafic. <coughs> and so here we're talking about a content of silica which is about 50% in terms of the, the, the weight of the, the, the lava itself, and the gases is about 1 to 2% of one particular blob of lava. Uh, so it, this lava is very runny, if you want. It can flow down the hills, and so that's why it creates these very gentle shields and, uh, of, 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 uh, of volcanoes. Is it hotter or colder than the lava we see now in, uh, you're coming down the hillside? It's, pretty much, it's about 1,000 degrees Celsius. That's standard, uh, for, standard. for the material is called basalt. And again, it's a mafic material. Mm -hmm. Whereas on this other one, you can see it's uh, much different. Uh, it, the slopes, are, the angles here are much more pointy, if you want. It's less, uh, uh, the slopes are less gentle. And this is what we call composite or stratovolcano. So for example, you can think of uh, volcanoes like Mount St. Helens, or Vesuvius, or Fuji, or Merapi in Indonesia. So these are created by uh, intermediate or felsic lavas. And so here we're talking about, for example, andesite, about 60% um, of silica dissolved into this material, and also uh, a little bit more gases, so maybe uh, 2 to 4%. For felsic lavas, such as rhyolite, for example, we have, this is like, for, for volcanoes that you would see in Chile or along the, the Ring of Fire. I saw that material in Iceland. Well, Iceland, uh, well, Iceland is a little bit different okay. because these are basalt. That, uh, so these are, we, 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 could talk, we could relate it to the first kind of volcanism. Okay. It's more explosive because of the interaction with the ice, but we don't want to talk about that. Okay. Uh, but for this one, the rhyolite, um, so we said basalt or mafic magma, 50% silica, felsic magma, it's a little bit more, 70 to 80%, and we have more gases. We have 4 to 6% gases dissolved into this. And so the shape of this volcano is, is more uh, steep, if you want, because the magma is viscous, it can't travel far, so it accumulates, and so that's why it forms this uh, more uh, the, the steeper, if you want, edifices. Does this re reflect a number of uh, eruptions? Each eruption forms a separate, um, you know, a separate ring around the. Oh volcano? no, no, no! This is just for the sake of this, is just for the demonstration. Okay, okay, yeah, this okay, is. Okay, the, right. Let's see some pictures actually, so you can see how these two volcanoes look like in in real life. So okay. here. This one is Mauna Loa on the Big Island. It's a sunrise, so you can really see how the edifice stands out. And you can see this shape, this really gentle shape, which we illustrated in the first case. And if, if we move on to the next picture, we can see, okay, this is a, a picture I took of the lava lake, the former lava lake, which was in Halemaumau crater on Kilauea. This is February 2018. And you can see how this lava, you, th this is a spattering uh, fountain, fountain, 
but you can see it's a very runny lava and the gases can easily escape from this runny lava uh, just because of, of its viscosity, just because of the viscosity which is very low. So it's not difficult for these gases to escape. Um, let's see another picture. Okay, this is Mount Hood in Oregon. And uh, this is a beautiful lake, so you can see yeah. the image. Yeah. Um, I took this picture when I was in Portland for a meeting at the International Association of Volcanology and Chemistry of the Earth Interior. Uh, but you can really see the shape, how different it is, how more pointy, and it looks more like uh, the model that we have here in the studio, this, this, this kind of um, eruptions. And so uh, let's maybe have a small demonstration of how. I'm not afraid. You're not afraid. No, I'm we're not we're, afraid. We're not going to blow up the studio. No, but yeah. <laughs> so here, uh, this volcano, it's a it's a shield volcano. We said that, and into the, this is the summit caldera. This is the main crater, such as, uh, for example, the Kilauea caldera or Mokuha Veo Veo, which, can, which is the main crater on the summit of Mauna Loa. And inside here, there is a, a magma chamber which contains uh, vinegar. And this is even balsamic vinegar because it was the only one I could find. <laughs> it's got to anyway, make a salad there. It's going it's to make a salad. <laughs> but, what, but now the vinegar is, the, does not actually appear in a volcano, though. Of course not, no. It'd be but a great this source is just, of salad dressing. So, uh, as a salad dressing, it can, it can work, of course. But this is just, uh, this is what we uh, call um, an analog experiment, if you want. We simulate what happens with the real volcano by using vinegar and also this one, which is not uh, something very expensive. <laughs> but this is really... Uh, baking soda or bicarbonate of sodium. So by pouring this uh, carbonate of uh, this bicarbonate of sodium into this volcano, we're going to create a chemical reaction. So some gases are going to be produced. But because the vinegar is very is not very viscous, you're going to see these gases are going to come out very easily of this material, and we're going to simulate an effusive eruption. And so here, let's pour some of this. Uh, into this, into the main vent. And now you're going to see some bubbles are going to form as the gases expand within this magma chamber. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, a, what an effusive eruption looks like. You can see this is what a lava fountain would look like. And now it looks like we're going to have, a, I'm going to turn it so the camera can see. But this is what a basaltic lava flow looks like. You can see how the gases escape, and you can see how gently this lava is pouring out the vent, and it's flowing down the hills of this volcano. Because it's highly liquid. It's yeah. highly liquid, and these bubbles, you can see, they can escape really, really gently from the volcano. This is really a basaltic. This is exactly what we're looking at on Kilauea right now with the fissure eruption. You can see how gently these gases exsolve. Yeah. And That's they, fabulous, right here on Think Tech. Live, Think Tech live. Hawaii, everybody. I want, <laughs> this doesn't happen on other media. <laughs> and now, uh, and then we're going to see what happens if more viscous materials uh, uh, come up to the surface and erupt. So we're going to see a more explosive eruption. But you can see the eruption here is still going on and bubbles. Uh, but you, you can see the, the gas is really, you see a big bubble here. That's yeah. what really is driving this vinegar to pour out and create the uh, the shield, basically. This is, gonna, this is not going to solidify like real lava is going to do. But uh, you can see really how it gently shaped this uh, And the this gas volcano. is what's driving it up. The gas is, what, is exactly what's driving it. You can see all these but bubbles. The bubbles are expanding, yeah. The bu the bu oh, you can see a big one right there. Yeah. But the bubbles expand, but you see how they pop. That's, that, that's what happens with a real lava fountain. The, these are big bubbles that pop, and that's what we see in, 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 in real now eruptions. It's, now it's stopping. Now it's you, slowing down. But, but now it's, you're it's, looking. It's receding. It's receding, that's right. 
and so as the magma recedes down because there's not enough gases you can see a caldera is formed ah. the main crater ah. as the magma goes down into the summit then the edifices here try to tend to collapse inside and it forms this big crater which is called a caldera and this is exactly what we're looking at at the summit of Kilauea right now with the subsiding lava lake and the collapse of Hale Ma'o Ma'o. Very, we're very looking at the caldera formation. Very right. interesting. This is so interesting. Thank you, Andrea. Let me, let me say, also say, and you can't catch this on video, is that as the receding takes place, you can smell the vinegar. <laughs> and it makes me want to have, you know, a, a small salad with Roquefort and, and uh, the vinegar dressing all let's together. Have, let's have a break and have a salad with this We're going to have a short break for our salad. We'll be right back with Andrea Gabrielli. <laughs> I'm Jay Fidel of Think Tech. You know, George Santayana said, you know, if you don't study history, you're, gonna, you're doomed to repeat it. And we have a history professor, it was wonderful to have him, uh, John David and HPU, and we do this thing, uh, History Lens. We see the world through history. Very important, critical to understand our world around us. We do this on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. whenever we can get him. Right. John, what would you add to right. that? Jay, we just tune in, folks, because we're talking about incredibly important issues, and we're projecting backwards into history, looking through the lens of history to add to our knowledge about these very important current issues, like uh, white supremacy, trade and tariffs, uh, uh, impeachment, all of these uh, important issues that we've been addressing on this show. Yeah, it, all, it runs all the way from from terrifying tariff <laughs> to historical <laughs> right. history. John David. <laughs> That's it. Thanks a lot, John. <laughs>back refreshed and the smell of vinegar pervades the studio and if you like vinegar mm, that's good come here <laughs> it's very interesting to see that flow off the top and to imagine it on a larger scale that's, that's right. That's not the only experiment we're doing today yeah? no this is this was only the first one now we're going to do a second one so here we have uh, we said that this um, uh, steeper volcano and now we're going to simulate what, uh, an, exp what an, 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 an eruption of a very felsic, very viscous material such as rhyolite or andesite is at a volcano. And now you're going to understand, uh, you're going to see that this magma will not flow like we saw this one and will stay next to the summit. So when basically this magma is poured out uh, with explosions because it's very viscous, the gas has to escape. The magma is going to stay next to the summit, and it's not going to travel far. And this is the reason why eruption after e eruption after eruption, it builds the volcano yeah. steeper yeah. Uh, than than the other one. Yeah. And so here, for example, we have this uh, globe here, which is a, a cryogenically, uh, you know, tested globe because we're going to use something very cold here. Yeah, we're going to yeah. use. Um, um, carbon, solidified carbon dioxide, which is very cold, and so to, to touch this carbon dioxide, we need a glove such as this one, which protects uh, hands. But first of all, I'm going to let you do that part, Andrew. Absolutely. So here, I'm going to open this volcano, and you see, it's really a plastic container in here, which simulates uh, the magma chamber. Okay, what, what's then, in there now? Nothing? Right now, it's empty. It's okay. empty. Right. So now here we have some dry ice. Which, Where did you get that? 7-Eleven? Well, this one is really, uh, see, this is what it looks like. Yeah. It's really uh, solidified carbon dioxide. And you, got it, you can get it at the uh, Pier 38. There is a nice store where you can oh, get is it. That right? It's very cold, but see, we're going to pour it, we're going to put it into the, the volcano. One. And then I'm going to, and this is really just uh, cold, uh, very cold carbon dioxide. It's nothing that harms uh, or What would anything. happen if you had uh, your bare hands on it? 
Well, uh, if you touch it for a very short amount of time, nothing. You can actually touch it and it's not particularly dangerous. But if you keep it for, uh, for a long time, then you may start to get to freeze. Yeah? That, that's basically oh, what happens. So it is very cold. It's about 100, minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And so you can see this is actually the carbon dioxide, this gas that you can see. I don't know if you can see it, but it's basically uh, sublimation. So it's really turning the carbon dioxide. It's turning into air. So you can literally really see these gases in the in, in the camera. But now we're going to put this one as well. And now I'm going to I'm done with this very nice glove, so I can yeah, put it I here. Like that glove. So we added basically just two pieces of um, carbon dioxide, frozen carbon dioxide, in here. So dry ice. And then here, this one is a little bit of soap that you can use to wash your hands, for example, or your dishes. Soap. soap. Yeah. Really soap. Well, I like my volcanoes clean. The volcano, is re it really is clean. So, <laughs> and so I'm going to just uh, close this uh, cover, and then I'm going to close the volcano again. See, so you can't do this in nature, no, only with analog yeah. experiments. Mount, Mount Hood and otherwise. Mount Wood, yeah. And then I'm going to pour this tiny bit of soap in here. This is liquid soap, yeah? And then at that point, uh, we need some water. This is a little bit of water, and I'm going to add the water into this. And now, as I pour in the water, you're going to see some steam coming out, yeah? From this. Uh, this is going to be... You're going to have to explain this reaction to yeah. me. You can see the steam here coming out. Okay. But then soon you're going to see some bubble coming out. So this, you can see, is very, very viscous material that sticks basically to the summit, you see. And uh, this is how, what happens with a really high viscosity magma. <coughs> so basically, the gases you can see they, they, they are trying to escape from this very viscous material, which in this case is represented by the soap. But you can see in the uh, video as well that these gases don't really travel far away from the summit. They tend to gather here, and the gases are not as peaceful as the other volcano. These are trying to escape. And so here you can see a very nice uh, uh, plume right now. Oh, I like that one. Right, oh. Look at that, right. But you can see how this, it, it, you can see some of these bubbles occasionally bursts and collapse down. These are very... Like a little explosion. These are very, very strong avalanches of gases and hot material which are called pyroclastic flows. And you can see one when, 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 hurt yourself when, now. when, when these pop. So yeah, this is lava. And now you can see very well that um, the material accumulates here at the summit, but doesn't really uh, travel far, you know. And uh, uh, so this is what happens when a really high visco viscosity magma basically <coughs> comes out to the surface. We have a variety of explosions and uh, occasionally plume. But sometimes this magma can even uh, oh, complete. Right now, uh, there is still a way from the gases to come out, and so that's why you can see you can see this plume basically. But occasionally, and now we add a little bit more water. You get some more then, huh? Yeah, you can see the bubbles. Missing water, yeah. yeah, you can you can see more bubbles coming out. That's a big one, and you can see you can really see these flows, uh, these avalanches that are created from. So this um, structure that is growing at the top, uh, it's like a protuberance. It's magma that can't flow far and accumulates at the summit. This is what volcanologists call a lava dome. This magma is so viscous, so viscous that can't travel away from the summit and sticks all the way there. And this is the reason why these volcanoes basically grow taller. Now, I was mentioning here, we, besides all this material, all this rhyolite being erupted, the gases can still find a way out. And you can see, occasionally, we have this burst. But sometimes, this material can completely obstruct the volcano. And in that case, and to simulate this, we have a cover, yeah? So we, if we place this here, we're going to simulate what happens with a really high 
pressure inside this volcano and you can hear the pressure building up and now we gotta we gotta cover we gotta <laughs> let's see there <laughs> this is what happens when a, when these gases can escape easily from a volcano so we have this very very explosive eruptions that was exciting so let's see one last picture let's see uh, I showed you what a lava dome looks like in this simulation. Yeah, this uh, basically material that they accumulate at the summit. But this is what it looks like in real life. This is Mount Wood. This is a close-up of the volcano. And then if we see the next picture, that uh, structure that I am uh, encircling with that red circle, that's basically a lava dome. That's what a... It blew off the top. One, uh, this is basically very high viscosity magma that has been extruded from the summit, and it's still there right now. Uh, very high viscosity uh, lavas can produce this kind of structures, this kind of lava domes. And when these things, uh, they grow very slowly as more magma is accumulated and they accumulate and they're very hot with a lot of gas like we saw here. But then when they collapse, as we saw in the model here, we saw all these gases coming out, they really, they really create a very deadly flows of rocks, very hot rocks, and also gases, which are called pyroclastic density currents. Now, pyro means fire from Greek, and um, plastic means, again, rocks, so fire and rock. So they are avalanches of molten material and gases. And they travel, they usually travel down the summits of the volcanoes uh, at uh, incredible speeds, even 700 kilometers per hour. And so we really we're talking about something extremely, extremely <coughs> dangerous. That's not what we have in Kilauea now. That's not what we have in Kilauea, but that's what we have at volcanoes, uh, for example, Gunung Merapi in Indonesia, or Vesuvius in Italy, or Fuego in Guatemala. Mm. And actually, I brought you a picture of these pyroclastic flows. So, so let's see, maybe, um, okay, this is a, a, a diagram of what happens uh, uh, when one of these explosions, one of these plumes of very hot, ashy materials fall down, you can see the gravity brings it down, and so it falls down and it starts to travel along the sides of the volcanoes, incinerating everything on their path, basically. But uh, here we, we're going, we have more explosions from this volcano here yeah. in, the, in this model. So, uh, honestly, as, as a, a volcanologist and a geologist and a geo physicist, whatever, which is your favorite one? In terms of eruptions? Yeah. Well, you like the drama. Well, you like the, the pyroplastic. Well, the drama is often associated with death because you can somehow run away from a lava flow. Of course, houses are going to be destroyed or properties, as we saw here, very sad happening on the Big Island. But you can survive. However, you can't run away from a pyroclastic flow. So in terms of, uh, you know, uh, life and value of life, I would probably choose the basaltic uh, effusive eruptions that it's we have. It's kinder and gentler. It's kinder and gentler, <laughs> whereas explosives such we, 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 we saw here, it's very dangerous and, you know, they, they can wow. really blast. This is a yeah. great demonstration. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Thank you for coming down. This is very important that we understand the difference. And, and happily that we have this kind, the kinder and gentler kind. Looks like we have some more eruptions here. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, we're going to do that after the show ends. But for now, we're going to kindly and gently slip into the afternoon. Thank you so much <laughs> for coming down. Thank you, here. Jay. Thank you Research for having me. Research in Manoa. Thank you. So interesting. <laughs> Hello.